Hello, everyone. In this session, we're going to look at our drafting and interpreting a financial statement. This is one of the level four uh, core paper that we have to attend in the exam. Now, uh, this paper was before uh, called the Statement of Financial Position for Limited Companies. But with the new syllabus, AQ 2022, now we call it drafting and interpreting a financial statement. The story is more or less same with AQ 16 or AQ 22, only they added a few more new topic in the AQ 2022. Other than everything is same, the exam criteria is also same. We have a two hours and 30 minutes, the exam duration, and we have to answer seven question in the exam. Now this seven task is the combination of some calculation task and some writing task. And obviously uh, you can see some tasks they are saying it will not be uh, marked through your mock practice. For example, task three, four, and seven. That means this three question is the writing question. <clears throat> now this exam will be quite straightforward. And uh, there will be few writing part, but it's not gonna be that difficult. If you uh, practice well, if your preparation is okay, you will be absolutely fine for this paper. This is one of the paper in level four. You can get a very good score if you want. You can get even uh, 95 or 96 on this paper because this is a financial accounting. And on financial accounting, it's a very easy to get a good score because we're expecting to prepare the financial statement. We're expecting to prepare a cash flow statement or we expecting uh, to prepare a sort of um, <clears throat> statement of changes in equity. So this thing more or less uh, same for every single question. If we practice few question and especially the adjustment, we have to be very, very careful with the adjustment. If our adjustment is okay, we'll be absolutely fine for this question. All right, so let's start with our uh, question. So the first thing we'll do, we will start our exam. As soon as we start, we can see like on the right corner, the time is already started, it's two hours and 30 minutes. <clears throat> and the time will be start counting down. Uh, the main thing you have to understand, uh, the question uh, you need to see from the reference material. So in the exam, they will give you this uh, section index, highlighter, and the references. Now the index will give you the list of the question, how many questions you're going to look at. And uh, the highlighter, you can highlight any information you want. And the reference section will give you the question. For example, here you can see task one and two. So the question or information we need for task one and two, we can get it from this reference section. So actually you can see the question at the same time and you can answer this question as well. All right, so once you open the question, the first thing you will do, you will look at the requirement, what the question asking for. So you don't uh, have to open the reference material first. Don't read the question first if you think you're not going to answer this question first because, for example, you had a plan to do a statement of financial position, but they gave you the cash flow. So you need to make sure like what question you want to answer first. So first you need to quickly look at the uh, requirement. So you can see here the requirements say draft a statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income for M Limited for the year end 31st of December 2021. Now, as soon as you read the question, now we understand we are looking for profit and loss account from this question. And also looking for other comprehensive income and the year end. This three information is a very much important. Let me tell you why. The first thing profit and loss account, we understand profit and loss account we prepare only for one year. So you need to say year ending. Remember that when you prepare the statement of financial position, we prepare only for a specific day or for a specific time. And for that reason, for the statement of financial position or for the balance sheet, we never say year ending. We always say as at. 
but when we prepare the profit and loss account we always say year ending 31st of march or 31st of december whatever it is so as soon as we see this one it is a profit and loss account so we understand we have to prepare the year ending profit and loss account that's the first thing the next thing is comprehensive income so other comprehensive income means that's not from the business operation so what does that mean that means when we have a business we have a trading activity trading activity means like every day i buy something and i sell something and i make some profit or i make some loss whatever so from the trading activity any income i have or any profit i have that will be the part of our continuous operation for the profit and loss account we called it profit from continuing operation that means as the business is continue as the business is running and that's why you're making this profit but on the other hand other comprehensive income this one have no link with the business trading so i trade the business i sell something or buy something doesn't matter still i will have some income from here so what is that thing this is basically the revolution revolution gain or we can say revolution surplus same thing so the way we do the revolution if we have any asset especially the fixed asset of course so if we have any fixed asset for example if we have a land and this land we had a cost price 20000 and we buy this land for example 20 years before now if we want to revalue this asset today maybe the land price will be now 30000 so from 20 it will be 30000 so that means there is a revolution reserve or revolution gain of 10,000. Now this 10,000 revolution is not because of I'm selling something or buying something or not because of my trading business. This 10,000 because of the revolution. And for that reason, this 10,000 will be part of our other comprehensive income. This 10,000 will be part of our other comprehensive income. So very careful with that. The last information, as I said, it is also important to remember the year ending date. Why it is so important to remember the year ending date? It is important because I have to look at is there any accruals or any prepayment? So for example, if the question tell me there was one invoice for electricity for 300 pound and my year end is December and we received the invoice on, for example, January 2012. So you see the invoice on 12, but they said one month, this invoice is for quarter, for one quarter to February or to uh, January, whatever. Let's say till quarter to February 2012. That means inside of the three, 300, I have a three month invoice. Three months to Feb. So if it is three month to Feb, that means we have a December, January and February, three months. So one month, December belongs to this year. So you need to divide 300 by three and times by one. So you see 100 basically belongs to the last year, even though I did not pay the invoice, but it's still this information belongs to last year. For that reason, this 100 will be added. This, uh, this 100 will be added as a accrual expense. So my expense will go up and as I did not make the payment yet, so it will be my liability. So it will be current liability. So two things, on the profit and loss account, my expense will go up. And on the statement of financial position, my liability will go up. 
So we need to remember these two things. So that's why we say these three information is very important to prepare the profit and loss account. All right, so once we have this uh, little bit of understanding, we know how to prepare the profit and loss account. It's a very simple. So we need to start with our revenue, then we minus the cost of sales, and we have the gross profit, then we minus the distribution and admin, then it will give us our profit from the operation. Then we see is there any finance cost, that means interest. So then we have to take away the interest, then we say profit before tax, then we calculate the tax, and we have a net profit from operation. And if there are any revaluation reserve, we add it after, and we say, this is our total comprehensive income. So that's not very new one for us. So we know the template anyway. So the next thing we're going to look at, the whole question is that any information we have that could be relevant for us. So let's have a look. So this is our format or template, whatever is it. And uh, yeah, we can see this is uh, the format. We need to just follow the format anyway. And now we need our question. So we click the reference and we click the task one and two. Once you open the question, the first thing we need to do, we need to first look go to the further information. This is the most tricky and important area. So we look at our further information. On the further information section, we need to look at few things and uh, we need to know, we know every single treatment we have. So the first thing we have here, inventory at 31st December 2001. That means it's a closing inventory. If we look at the inventory, and if the inventory belongs to at the end of the year, that means it's a closing inventory. So we know what, will, what we need to do with that. So the closing inventory will be part of our cost of sales. We take away from cost of sales. And also we add this one as a current asset on the statement of financial position. Every single entry we have, it will go to two place. Remember that any adjustment always go to place. So the closing inventory is a credit on the profit and loss account. It will be take away from the cost of sales. And also it will be our current asset on the statement of financial position. So the first one is done. <clears throat> the next one we have here is say, an invoice for 24 in respect of marketing cost for the period November to January. So November, December, January, three month. Was received on 5th of February, 12. So we received the invoice after the year end. This invoice was not included in the balance in the trial balance. So this invoice is not included. The marketing costs are treated as distribution cost. So you can see here this 24,000 for three month, 24,000 for three month. And obviously we know November, December, January, three month, November to January. But November and December belongs to 2021. Only January belongs to next year. So that means two months I have to add it for this year because we follow the accrual concept to prepare the accounts. So two months I have to include it for this period. So 24,000 divided by three times by two. And whatever it is, it should be 16,000. So this 16,000, we need to add it for this period. So this will be added as the accrual on the profit and loss account with the distribution cost. And also it is a liability because I did not make the payment until next year. So it will be my current liability as a payable on our financial statement. So that's it. That's what we explained before uh, they start the question, we explain how to treat the accruals and the prepayment. The next one we have a number three salary of 50,000 paid to the manager of distribution depot has been incorrectly classified as admin. So that means 50,000 supposed to be distribution, but by mistake, we said it is our uh, admin. So if this is the case, what we need to do, we need to take away from the admin. So from the admin, we're going to minus it. So less from admin, 50,000. And we're going to add in distribution, add on distribution. 
50,000. And that's it. The next thing we have here, trade receivables, is included debt, 24,000, which is a write-off. Uh, Mr. Limited classify irrecoverable debt as a admin expense. So if this is the case, so irrecoverable debt, we already know what it is. Irrecoverable debt is the expense. Now they said classified as the admin expense. So the admin expense, we have to add it this 24 as irrecoverable debt. Irrecoverable debt means the money will not be recovered from the credit customer. So for example, if the credit customer gone for bankrupt or they said like, I cannot pay the outstanding balance. So we have to write up this amount. If you are very much sure, you're not going to get this money. So this amount will be expense on the profit and loss account. And on the other hand, on the balance sheet, we have to take away from our total trade receivables. So 24, we need to add uh, as the admin cost, as expense, and also 24 will be added as a sales ledger control or trade receivables. We have to take away from there, not add, take away. All right, the next one we have here, the corporation tax balance 17,000 included in the trial balance was a result of an overestimated of the tax liability for the previous year. So remember that if there is overestimated, that means we paid more tax last year. Previous year means the last year. See, if we paid last year more 17,000, from this year, we have to minus 17,000. The corporation tax charge in respect of the profit for the year ended 31st of December 2021 has been estimated to 10. So this year I'm expecting 210,000. So from 210,000, Last year, I paid 17,000 more, so I need to minus that. So this will be my balance for this year. The next thing we have here, land included in a property plant and equipment at cost of 2,300,000 was revalued 300,000. So from 23 to 300, I revalued that, so I increased by 700. So this is my revaluation reserve or revaluation surplus. And this 700 will be our other comprehensive income. Remember that. We said if there is a revaluation result, we treat this one as a other comprehensive income. And this will be increased the same amount by uh, the asset on our balance sheet. So 700 will be part of other comprehensive income. And also 700 will be increased on the balance sheet uh, because of the revaluation of our asset. All right, all of the operation are continuing operations. So fair enough. So I think we need our information, what we need. If we can remember what we said, that's absolutely fine to make our uh, question ready. All right, so let's go to the question now and uh, do some workings. And after that, we'll complete this question. So first we need to do some workings. On the working section, you can see here, we have a revenue, we have a distribution, we have a tax, we have a cost of sales, and we have an admin. Do not ignore the workings because you have almost 50% marks on the workings. So you need to make sure you show the workings, how you end up with. Let's start with the revenue. We know very well in the revenue, all you have to do, if there is any sales return, it will be take away. So sales minus sales return, that will give us the net sales. On the profit and loss account, we're going to show the net sales. So if there is a sales and sales return, we have to take away. So let's find the sales first. First, we find the sales. Let's see where, how much is the sales we have. So you can see the sales we have here, 8754. So we're going to write 8754. And we need to see is there any sales return. So we need to find sales return. Sometimes they can give you some boxes extra. Doesn't mean you have to find something. They can try to make you confused. If there is no sales return, you can make this box just empty. But in this question, I can see the sales return. So we have 35 is the sales return we have here. So you said 35 is the sales return. So the 35, but make sure 35 you show as a minus because sales return will reduce the total sales. 
So my next cells will be 8719. That's it. So first one is done. Sales done. The next one cost of sales. Let's start with our opening balance, opening inventory. Opening inventory plus purchase, less purchase return, less closing inventory. So opening inventory, we have inventory at 1st of January. So 940. So we have 940 here. And we have to write it down here. 940 then you have to find our purchase so how much is the purchase so you can see here you have a purchase 5289 so we're going to write 5289 this is our purchase and then you have a purchase return you can see in the question you can see purchase return and the purchase return is 43 so 43 and the purchase return will reduce my purchase. So make sure you put the minus sign. And finally, the closing inventory. Closing inventory always in the additional information. Remember that, that we have discussed. So let's have a look at our closing inventory. That is uh, 841. So minus 841, minus 841. And that gives me 5345. So this is our cost of sales. Very good. Let's move to the next one, distribution cost. So distribution cost, let's start with our trial balance figure. So where is the distribution cost? Uh, yes, we have 738. So 738. And then we have uh, some adjustment. They said 50,000 salary. It's supposed to be uh, supposed to be distribution, but by mistake, we say admin. So I need to add this one with the distribution, 50,000. So distribution, I need to add. So he said, misclassified salary. So salary we put by mistake, it will be added. And also we have a adjustment, if you remember, that one we said 24,000. The marketing cost, it is a part of distribution cost. So 16,000 is accrual. So you need to add 16,000 and 60,000 will be also as a liability. So we have discussed this part before. So let's try to do that now. So we said accruals, adjustment marketing cost, and that is 16. Remember the journal for the accruals. Accruals is uh, debit. It will increase our profit and loss account expense. And also it will create the liability because we didn't make the payment yet. All right, so 804 we have a distribution cost. The next one we have here, the tax. So first we take from the trial balance, tax from the current year. So you don't have anything on the uh, trial balance. We should have 17. The question said corporation tax 17. That's from the previous year. And this is already stated, you have to take it out. And this year is 210. So we said this year, my tax average is 210, but last year I have I have paid 17 more. So I need to take away 17. It was overestimated. Remember that if there is an overestimated, we have to take away. If there is an underestimated, then you have to add it. So my this year from the profit and loss account, I'm going to take away the tax 193. Very good. Let's move to the next one then. The next one we have admin expense. The admin expense, we start with the admin expense and uh, we have our balance on the trial balance. Let's have a look, what is the admin? So 1456, so we have 1456. And the same thing, the uh, 50,000 we have added with the distribution. So you need to take it out from the admin. They said by mistake we put on admin, so we take out from the admin and record it as a distribution. And finally, there is one irrecoverable debt. If you remember, the trade is civil thing to debt 24,000 is a write off and it is a part of admin, so you need to say irrecoverable debt, it is 24. And that's it. We have here 1430. So, our workings is done. In the exam, you're gonna see more or less same working. So, if you're ready for that, you'll be absolutely fine. All right, now we're going to uh, go back to our main question. All you have to do, you have to remember the revenue is 8719, distribution 804, tax 193, cost of sales 5345, and, and that means 1430, that's it. 
Let's start with the revenue. So the first one, we have a revenue that is 8719. 8719, then the cost of sales we have that is minus 5345. So we'll have automatically the gross profit, then the distribution we have done the working sold ID minus 804. And the admin we have calculated that before as well 1430. 1430 so minus all the expenses. Now the finance cost means the interest, it should be on the trial balance. So if you look at the interest paid, 64. So 64 is the interest paid, that's my finance cost. And my profit before tax is this, the tax we have already calculated, minus 193. And that gives me my profit from the continuous operation. Now we have some other comprehensive income that is 700, we have calculated that because we have some regulation from 2300 to 3000 on the question, if you look at here, on the last part of the further information, so we have revelation of the land. So we need to add 700, and this is our other comprehensive income, and that's it. So you have a profit from the operation is 883. This one will be added as a capital on our financial statement. Remember that. And this 700 will be added as a part of the revelation of the asset. So we're not going to take 1583, we'll take 883 as a part of our profit when you will prepare a financial statement. Very careful with this thing. If you really understand this one, obviously like it's not going to be difficult. And in the exam, you can get a full marks from this question. And obviously like uh, uh, that will be very easy if you know the treatment, especially the additional information or the adjustment. All right, let's move on to our next section. The next section we have here, draft a statement of changes in equity, we call it SOCI, a statement of change in inequity. Now here it's a very simple, all you have to do, you have to see what is the changes coming here. Now, for example, if there is a share capital, we need to look at what is the opening balance from the trial balance. So balance at 1st of January. So we need to take the opening balance. We'll take the opening balance for the revaluation reserve, return earnings. And obviously remember, if there is any share capital issue, so new capital issue, it will increase the share capital. And the revolution reserve, if the new revolution, for example, here it is 700, so it will be increased. And return earnings will be increased by the profit we make. So profit, that profit we make, 883 from the profit and loss account, it will be increased our return earnings. Remember that return earnings means the total profit. For example, if we have a profit to 1,000 pound, and from the 1,000, if we give a dividend 500, and uh, 500, we still have left on the profit as a savings, and we call it RE, that is return earnings. So every single profit is accumulated on the return earnings account. So whatever profit company have left over, it always goes to the return earnings account. And if we pay any dividend, the return earnings will be reduced because dividend paid from the return earnings. All right. So let's try this one now. Let's start with our shared capital, 32.40. So our opening balance, 32.40. Revelation reserve, we don't have anything on the trial balance. So return earnings we have on the trial balance, 639. 639. And that gives me total 38.79, okay. Now changes in equity. So what happened during this year? Total comprehensive income. There is no share capital issue. We have a revolution surplus 700. So we make some revolution. And we have some return earnings. That is my profit I make from the profit and loss account. This is 83. So this is happening this year. We call it changes in equity. Now dividend. Is there any dividend we pay during the year? We need to look at our trial balance. We can see the last, last one is said on the trial balance, dividend paid 250, dividend paid to the shareholder. If we pay the dividend, the return earnings will be reduced because the total profit will be reduced. So we need to say we pay the dividend from the return earnings. So minus 250. So my total dividend will be, return earnings will be reduced. So now we have 1,272. And that's it. So this information later on, will take it to the, equity part of our statement of financial position. So share capital will be this, devaluation will be this, return earnings will be this, and total equity will be this. All right, so this is the end of our question number one. Now I'll move to our question number two. And there we need to prepare our statement of financial position. And it's not gonna be difficult. So same story, 
from the same question, just need to prepare the balance sheet. All right, the next question we have here, task two, this task is a continue from the task one, use the same data. So you're going to follow the same data we have here. Fair enough, here you have to prepare the statement of financial position. So you don't need to prepare additional notice on that. So this information will be same in the exam as well. So make sure if you read one, you don't have to read again on the exam, like you need to use the minus sign for the deduction, this and that. So you read this thing once. So in the exam time, you don't have to read the same story again so that you can save some time. All right, so here we're going to start with our working, same thing, and then we're going to complete our financial statement. So let's move on to the working page. On the working page, you can see like we have working for property plan equipment, we have a written earnings, trade and other receivables and trade and other people. This one, if you want to make it a little bit bigger, you can do that. If you see it's covering the reference of the question, you can always make it left and right. So you can see the whole question and the, and the information as well at the same time. All right. So start with our property plan equipment. Let's start with the opening balance. So property planning equipment, whatever the cost question said, you can see question said 8362. That's my cost. 8362. Then after that, we have to look at is there any accumulated depreciation? Depreciation will always reduce the value of the property plan equipment or PPE. So accumulated depreciation, we have 3716. So accumulated position minus 37 and 16. And then we have to look at, is there any revolution? So we know already we have a 700 revolution. So I need to look at 700. It will increase the value of the asset because of the revolution. So we have now five, three and four zero. So our property plan equipment is done. The next one is a written earnings. So written earnings will look at the opening balance, written earnings for our uh, trial balance. So at the beginning, how much money we had? We have 639. So it said 639 we had at the beginning. And after that, we make a profit. So profit for the year that we make 883. That's the profit we make. And uh, then after that, we will say how much dividend we paid. This is exactly from the changes and equity that we have done with the last section. So it's a dividend. We paid the dividend minus 250. So now we have profit left on our return on this account, 1272. All right, then trade and other receivables. Trade and other receivables. So we start with the opening balance. So it's a receivables. My question said we have a trade receivable. So where is it? Uh, we have trade payable. Where is the trade receivables? Yeah, it's in the top. 679. So trade receivable 679 we have on the trial balance. 679. And after that, we have to look at, is there any prepayment? So prepayment is our current asset. All the current asset will come trade and other receivables. That's the reason the question said trade and other receivables. So if you look at the question and uh, prepayment, prepayment is asset. Yeah, we can see 81 prepayment, prepayment, 81. Is there any bank or cash? No, there's no bank cash. So we don't have any bank or cash. And uh, is there anything else we have? So yeah, that's it, I think. Trade and other receivables. So let's look at the additional information. What we have here. So we can see we have here uh, 24, remember that trade receivables include 24 is a write off. That means you're not going to get this money back. So it's irrecoverable date. We need to minus it. Always the irrecoverable date will reduce our trade receivables figure. Remember that. All right. Now uh, that's it, I think. So we don't have any other receivables. The payable. So let's look at the payable. Trade payable. Trade payable we have here on the question 641. 641. And if you remember, we have accruals from the additional information. 
this 24,000 invoice, 16,000 was due. So we need to look at this one. So it's a liability for me. So it said accruals, 16,000. I have used the services, but didn't make the payment here. So it's create my liability. So my total liability will be now 500 and 657. So that's the what case is done. It's very simple, not difficult at all. Now we can go back to the question and try to complete it. Uh, all you have to do, you have to remember our property plan equipment, 5346, we have written earnings, 1272. We have a trade and other receivable, 736. And we have a uh, trade and other payable, that is 657. All right, so let's start with our non-current asset. So the workings we have done, property plan equipment, let's start with that, property plan equipment. And this is uh, 5346. And then you have a current asset. Current asset, the first thing we know, like we need our inventories, that's the closing inventories from the question. So the question tell us already, 841. So this is my closing inventories. Then we have a trade and other payable receivables that we have I have done the working so trade and other receivables and that uh, gives me uh, 736 and uh, the next one we have cash and cash equivalent cash at bank we have 56 cash at bank 56 If there is only bank or if there is only cash, still it will be treated as a cash and cash equivalent. But remember, if there is any bank overdraft, for example, you don't see the bank, but you see the bank overdraft, uh, that means it will be a current liability, not current asset. All right, so you have 6979. This is my total asset. Now we need to look at our equity and liability. On the equity section, it just copy of our source statement of changes in equity that we have done on the last question. But we, have, we can do again here as well. So you start with the share capital. And the share capital have no chance, 3240. Share capital, 3240. There is no new share capital issued. So then you have a revaluation surplus. And that we have 700. And also written earnings. And that we have 51272 after minusing the dividend to 50. Then the non-kind liability, it should be only the bank loan if we have any. So bank loan 900, so we have a bank loan. Non-kind liability is only the bank loan. 100. And the current liability, you have trade and other payable. Trade and other payable, that workings we have done. That is 657. And finally, you need to look at how much tax we need to pay this year. So you can see here, 210 is my tax liability for this year. The reason tax is a liability <clears throat> because normally we don't pay the tax at the same year. For example, uh, I have to wait until my year is ended. Then from that day, I have nine month one day to calculate my tax and pay to HMRC. So that means like for the tax for 2021, I pay 2022. For the tax year 2022, I pay in 2023. So tax is always paid after one year. And for that reason, tax is always my liability. So I said, this will be my tax liability. And that for this year will be 210. 210. And after that, it should match exactly you can see here, the total asset exactly should match with our total equity and liability. If this two doesn't match, that means there is some problem. Remember that we have to make sure like it match. If it is match, then we'll get the full marks from this question. And obviously you can see this is a 17 marks question. It doesn't take long if we really know how to do it. All right, let's try one more question. And um, then we'll finish our today's session. Let's try one more question. The next question we have here, that is task three. 
and it's look like a theoretical question. Let's read a little bit and try to do something, try to write something. And I'll tell you how much you need to write to get the full marks. So it says, the first question it says like, this task is about the reporting framework. And there will be always like question like that in the exam. So explain why a trade payable should be recognized as a liability based on the IFRS conceptual framework. Now, <clears throat> IFRS means International uh, Financial Reporting Standard. And uh, obviously like it is the modification of IAS. So IAS says, means like International Accounting Standard and it is the modification made with IAS is like IFRS. Now, obviously like uh, you can see it's 2018, the new one, of course, uh, if it is new, that means this modification has been done and that's why we called it IFRS. The reason trade payable will be recognized as a liability. Trade payable means try to understand what is it. So when you buy something, when you buy something, buy something from the supplier, from supplier. When you buy something from the supplier on credit, what does that mean? That means we buy something from the supplier and we tell our supplier, I will pay you later. So if I tell this thing to my supplier, like, okay, let me buy something from you and I'll pay, pay you later. So I'm creating a liability. <clears throat> well, how I'm creating a liability? Because I'm buying something now, but I'm not paying for that. So if I pay later, it's create a liability for me because if I buy something or take the services, I need to pay for that. So for that reason, it is a liability for me. Now, we need to explain the same thing here. We have to say, because of the present obligation, so it's a present obligation. So a present obligation because of the past events. Present application because of the past event. That means I have done something in, in the past and that's why it's create obligation. That means I buy something, so I have to pay for that. So a present application because of the past event that the buyer can not avoid. So you cannot tell your uh, supplier like, okay, I'm not going to pay you. So you cannot avoid this application. You have to pay it. So this is the story of our uh, explanation. And obviously like you can say as the purchase of goods or services. And they have to make payment for that. That's it. If we can add this four point, then four marks is easily we can get. You really don't have to write too much. Remember that. For one sentence, one marks, one sentence will be absolutely fine. Next one we have here, explain the meaning of comparability based on the IFRS conceptual framework 2018. Now comparability is all about like, if I like to compare something, so compare with last year data, compare with the industry, for example, how do I know I'm doing good or bad if I don't have the last year data or last year result? That's why when you prepare the limited company accounts, we always show the last year data. <clears throat> For example, if we are in 2023, we show at the same time so what happened in 2022. And obviously, so that we can see my sales has increased, my cost of sales has decreased, my marketing expense increased. So we can see the comparison, like I'm doing better than last year or I'm doing the same thing. So also like it helped me to understand like the consistency, consistency. Consistency also need to be followed. Uh, what does that mean consistency? Consistency means like uh, we have to follow the same pattern transaction. For example, let's say last year I said uh, marketing as a uh, distribution cost, for example. 
And this year I said, no, my marketing is the admin cost. So what will happen? My distribution cost will be lower this year and the admin cost will be higher because the marketing I put on admin rather than distribution. So if this is happens, so I cannot compare it properly. For that reason, we need to make sure we keep the consistency. For example, last year you put uh, uh, any expense as the operating expense, but this year you add on the cost of sales. So what will happen? Your cost of sales will go up and the gross profit will go down. On the other hand, operating expense will go down. So it will not be uh, very helpful to compare with accurate figure if you don't keep the consistency. So you need to make sure like the way you categorize, even though from the HMRC uh, point of view, there is no problem for that because you are um, paying the right amount of tax. Maybe HMRC will not be unhappy for that, but obviously to compare like you're doing good or bad, you will not be able to do if you don't follow the consistency. For two marks, it should be fine. If you just write two sentences, it's absolutely fine. All right, let's move to the next one. Next one it says, identify whether each of the following characteristics is true or false in respect of public limited company, PLC. Now it says, a PLC must submit accounts to company house within nine months of the counting year end. It's not true, it's a 12 month. It's a 12 month, remember that accounts and paying the tax is not the same thing. So to submit a tax return, tax return to HMRC is nine months and one day. But to the company house is 12 months, remember that. To the company house is 12 months, but to the tax return to HMRC is nine months and one day. So you have to pay your tax within nine months, one day after your end of the accounting year. But uh, to submit your accounts to company house, you have 12 months. If PLC must have two or more shareholders, that's definitely true. If you are a public limited company, you have to have at least two or more shareholders. All right, so this is the end of our question number three. All right, the next thing I'm going to talk about, like I uh, have received some email and some students asking like how to learn some practical work. So how actually this knowledge can be implemented in the real work. So how we do the work in the software, how to uh, prepare the limited company accounts on the software and how we do the bank analysis, how to find uh, the extended trial balance and how to prepare the trial balance and enter into the software and prepare the accounts to submit to HMRC. So how it is actually work. So if this is the case, remember, um, uh, I have some courses, you can have a look, um, uh, it could be helpful for you. So let me show you uh, the page. So if you are interested to learn any practical work, you can uh, look at the link I will put on the description. So you can uh, click that link and it will take here. So you have some courses here, for example, build your own account as a practice, final account training, management account training, then assistant accountant training, uh, bookkeeping and payroll and uh, bookkeeping and VAT return. This could be very much useful to make you ready and give you some practical experience if you like to work in the practice or in a company and you need some experience. So uh, if you really interested, you can have a look and if it is helpful, you can get this course from there. I have designed this course so that actually uh, you can work on the workplace and uh, I know what type of work you need to do. So it could be very much helpful for you. All right, so we're going to stop here today and uh, maybe on the next session, I'll do uh, more question from the financial statement. Thank you very much everyone for watching. If you like this video, make sure you like, or if you have any question, feel free to email me or write uh, on the comment section below. Thank you very much.